What's up? Welcome back to another uh, installment in our Raspberry Pi stuff. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you how to reconfigure and load a new image on your uh, SD card for your Raspberry Pi. Sometimes this is a problem because uh, it can be a little bit tricky to read it because since it actually partitions and formats your uh, SD card just similar to the way it uh, partitions and formats a uh, hard drive, um, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get it back where you can then slap a new image on it. Now, there might be multiple methods for doing this. This is just the best way that I know of, and it's free uh, to do it this way. Um, when you open up your disk, you'll see that there'll be uh, a bunch of, when you put your SD card into an SD card reader, I mean, you'll see that there's a bunch of, a bunch of files in here, as well as the card only registers that it is, uh, if I go to my computer, that it's only like 55 megabytes. Well, we know that's not right. So what I'm going to do is the next uh, shot, I'm going to stop the camera here, and we'll go over. And what I like to do is I like to use Nopix. And those of you that, uh, I guess, don't know what Nopix is, um, let's see, let me grab a uh, let me grab a web really fast. I think I can, you can, I think I got, I'll put a download link or something. But um, if you go to uh, linuxiso.org, I believe, I'm doing this off the top of my brain. There we go. You should find uh, Nopix somewhere. Wow, there's a lot of versions. There it is down here. Nopix is uh, basically a bootable DVD or CD, depending on what you want to do. You can create CD, CD or DVD images, um, but it's a bootable, <coughs> excuse me, CD DVD. And so that way you just throw it in the drive of a computer, any computer, doesn't matter what, restart the computer, boom, it boots into uh, Nopix Linux. So that way you have Linux. And the cool part about Nopix, and those of you that don't know, is that it's used greatly for troubleshooting. Um, you could troubleshoot uh, lots of computer problems with it because it has lots of uh, built-in tools already, especially like uh, the one that we're going to use, um, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. So I'll be back in just a minute. I've got a Nopix machine. I apologize for it being so grainy, but I'm got kind of an interesting way I'm hooking it all up. Right now I'm going to go to our little penguin. I'm going to grab ourselves a root shell. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in QT parted. What that does is that's going to bring up a partitioning software. Um, right now the uh, the I've installed the, the SD card reader. Um, popped right up and everything. Put the SD card in there. Now what we're going to do, oops, if I can get this thing maximized here, is we got to get the right disk, which we got to find. Wow, this thing loaded a whole bunch of disks here. Uh, here we go. There it is. Found it. All right. So now, as you can see, it's got two different partitions on it. One's kind of a Windows one. That's the that 56. I don't know if you can really see it, but that's that 55 one that we were seeing. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna delete them all by selecting them and then hitting the trash can that's up here, and that deletes it. Go to the next one, trash can it. And we just want it to be completely raw, raw data. And then what we do is we come over here and there's a disk that's called commit. You hit that. Yes, we're sure. And then it's complete. Everything's done. Everything went successfully. So, okay. And that's basically all we got to do. Now, we're pretty much done here. So what we'll do is we'll go back into Windows. Like I said, sorry if this is really grainy. Um, I'm doing a whole bunch of different things, but hopefully you get you see the gist of the process. But this is done with Nopix. Um, just booted it on a PC and started at it. Um, the problem was was I couldn't boot it on the PC I normally use to capture with because uh, I don't have my capturing software on a bootable CD. So that's kind of where that's at. All right. Well, next time you see me, it'll be back in Windows and we'll finish the uh, finish the format. Okay, guys, welcome back. We're gonna go ahead and for this portion of it, we're gonna go ahead and reformat our SD card. So I've got the the SD card installed and ready to go into my reader. So where we're going to go from here now, I'm back on a Windows machine. We're going to go over here. We're going to hit Start Computer. Right-click on Computer and choose Manage. Uh, and this will be nice and slow for us. Bring up the Manager. Now we're going to go down here to Disk Management. On Disk Management, once it comes up, it should we should see our unformatted uh, disk. If we go over here and scroll down, here it is, disk four, unallocated. So that means that it's completely 
completely uh, wiped out. There is no formatting whatsoever on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, choose new simple volume. Oh, next, the size is fine. It'll assign drive letter K to it, that's fine. It'll format to FAT32, it'll be called new volume, that's fine with me. Hit finish, and then it's pretty much reformatted as a healthy partition, 7.4 gigabytes. So now we should be able to go over here to my computer and there it is, we can see it. So all right, so we just reformatted it. Now what we're gonna do to get our other image on here is we are going to get our Win32 disk imager. Oh, and yes, it's fine that it installs. I hate that, that, that does that. Okay, here's our disk imager. Now the disk image that we're gonna be going for is going to be the Wheezy image, not the Raspbian image, because what we're gonna be doing later is we're gonna be doing some development using Java using the JDK for Java. So uh, in order for right now, Java has created one specifically for the Raspberry Pi, believe it or not, for the ARM processors, a JDK for that. So, but the only problem is, is it only works on the Wheezy version of the Debian uh, Linux. It, uh, it does not work on Raspbian. So we have to install Wheezy, hence why we're redoing our image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click write, and that's gonna tell me, yes, that it's gonna write it on the device, yes, we want to do it. So now it will go ahead and reinstall the image, but this one is gonna be the Wheezy image and not the Raspbian image. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this go ahead and install. That'll probably be it for this video. This is how you basically redo your image. Apologize for the graininess and the, the nastiness of the the, uh, the Linux deal, but like I said, I, I couldn't you couldn't put Nopix on the computer that I'm using because it would, uh, well, I don't have Cam Studio, or, which is my recording software on Nopix because it's a bootable CD. So um, I just wanted to show you that. Um, like I said, Nopix is free, you just download it, um, use it, and no big deal. Um, uh, but I did want to show you uh, in a good, good view, like this view, um, uh, Windows, how to reformat it. Whereas you could go ahead and do the whole formatting in uh, Qt Parted, which is that partitioning software, or any partitioning software of your choice. I just chose that one, so it doesn't have to be the Nopix version. I just showed you one that's free. So you could do all the reformatting that way and just reformat it to FAT32. But make sure you format it to FAT32 if you're gonna be using this Win32 disk imager in a Windows environment, because if you don't format it to FAT32, uh, Windows will not recognize it. Uh, if you format it to Extended 3 or any of the other ones, uh, Windows won't recognize it. So FAT32, or, well, or NTFS. If you do NTFS, Windows will recognize that too. But FAT32, you're pretty much safe because Linux and Windows both can recognize and use that filing system. So I've rattled on for enough time. We've got some cool stuff coming up, upcoming things, as we've got, like I said, some development with Java. There's a reason for all this, a uh, reason to the madness. Um, we're gonna be hopefully doing some web server stuff, showing you how to install a web server on your Raspberry Pi, kind of turn it into a, into a web server where you can have your own web pages. And then also I'm gonna show you how to create Java applets and embed them into HTML code so you can use them in your uh, web page and the whole coup de gras to this is hopefully we were going to be able to control the GPIO from the uh, web interface which ought to be pretty cool using the Java applet as our way and our means of getting to the GPIO on the on the chip. It has been proving to be a little bit difficult, the method and the way that I want to do it. There are uh, other things out there. There's a lot of Python code that uh, you can use in an embedded web server environment, environment and where you can have a web page uses Python code to uh, to access the GPIO. I'm doing mine a little bit different. I haven't really been able to find anything on the internet that is doing it the way I'm doing it. So I'm kind of breaking some new ground, which is a good thing for all of you guys, but also is kind of a painful thing for me because I don't have anyone I can just flat out ask. <laughs> so anyway, once I get it all figured out, I'll make me some videos. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you all the, basically the steps leading up to uh, being able to do this. So getting Java on, getting uh, a web server set up, getting web page created, getting some simple Java uh, applet programs written and how to do an applet in HTML code and all that fun stuff. So I've rattled on enough. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, uh, all those things. Send them to your friends, whatever. And I will catch you guys later. And so I think that ought to do it. Take care, guys. Ha, 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 ha.